everyone, welcome back. This is part two of the Etsy versus your own website video. That was originally meant to be one video, but we had to split it in two because it ended up being way too long. In this part, I'm going to talk about what it has been like for me having my own website as compared to having an Etsy shop. If you've missed part one, go back and watch that. There is also a really, really long blog post that I made on this topic. I will leave the link in the description that you can also read for additional information. Another tip for you, I tend to speak really, really slow when I'm thinking very hard about what I'm going to say, as is the case for this video and the previous video, which is why I recommend watching it at double speed. With all that being said, I think we can continue with the video. And one more point before we continue, just a little disclaimer. Everything that I'm talking about in this video is based on my own personal experience in my very specific situation of having a very small art-related business in Denmark. It's probably biased, so if you are interested in this topic, I recommend you seek additional information because there is a ton out there. So with all that being said, let's get back to the original video. Let us now talk about selling on your own platform or building your own platform, having your own web shop. What is that like? Pretty much from the start, I knew that sooner or later I would want to have my own shop because I like owning things. Well, I just thought it made sense for my business, uh, especially over time when Etsy started to be more and more insufferable. I was not liking the idea of linking to them or sending my audience to them. So I decided it's time for me to build my own web shop. And in January last year, 2022, was that last year? I think so. January, 2022, I started building my own web shop. I had just stopped working full time. So I had all this time and I wanted to do this thing anyway. So it all made sense. I already had a website, so I had the domain and hosting and all that. I was using it as my portfolio site for my, my graphic design illustration business, but I was not really using it that much. Just every now and then I would send a potential client to basically view my work, but more often than not, I would just kind of link to a specific pro project or specific image. So. It wasn't really doing that much for me. So I just decided to rework it into a web shop and I still have a portfolio section. So the two can exist together. When it comes to building your own web shop, there is so many options again out there. There is Squarespace, Wix, most of all Shopify, I think. These are very popular. I think they're very user-friendly. They're very yeah, well known. I don't know. And I did consider them for like five minutes, but I thought they were way too expensive. I didn't want to invest that much. I had my website on WordPress, wordpress.org. So it's the free WordPress because you also have wordpress.com where you pay or something. I don't know. Uh, but basically WordPress is free. I did a whole bunch of research again and what I ended up doing was having the base site on WordPress using the WooCommerce plugin for the shop stuff. And to make it all look nice, I'm using the Elementor plugin, which I pay for and it really doesn't cost that much. I think it was like $49 or something like that, which is very doable per year. Something to be aware of if you're using WordPress is that a lot of the work of building the shop or site or whatever is up to you. Uh, I don't really know coding, so I am using very user-friendly themes, in this case Elementor. Um, so you can do that, but it it's not, I imagine, as easy as something like Shopify would be because Shopify is made for people who don't know anything and also maybe don't want to do so much research or something. 
For me, that's not a problem. I consider myself fairly tech savvy ish. If I don't know how to do something and I really want to do it, I find a way how to do it. Well, it's, it's Google. It's always Google. So yeah, for me, this sort of DIY option was very good. It just suits me well. <laughs> but be aware that it, it could be a bit of work. It took me about six months uh, until I could launch my web shop. So, and again, if you're someone who is uh, very good with all this uh, web building stuff, then maybe that's not a problem at all. Yeah, sorry, we just lost the light. So let's talk about owning a web shop. What's good about it? What are the pros? Pro number one is you own everything and you're 100% in control. And that's a beautiful thing. Personally, I'm so, so happy that I have my own space where I can do whatever I like, however I like. I can customize it and personalize it any way I like. As someone who works with visual communication, my education is in graphic design. I really like being able to build my brand however makes sense to me, which you can't really do on Etsy. I think there is an option where you pay some kind of membership or whatever, so you have more customization in the way your shop looks, but I'm not gonna pay for that. And on my own website, I'm the boss and I like that. Another thing I feel like having your own web shop feels more professional and that might not be necessary if you're just doing something as a hobby and you don't really care that much. Uh, but in my case, I want to make something bigger out of this. I am working on having partnerships with other shops and retailers and so on. And I feel like when I link them to my own web shop, that looks a lot more serious and established than if I would link them to my Etsy when I try to prove that I'm like a serious business or something. I'm, I'm very serious. So I think if you plan to grow and be eventually more serious about your business, or maybe you already are, I think having a web, website is quite important. Another pro is that whenever a customer visits your shop, they're visiting your shop and all of the attention is on you. When you're on Etsy, people are browsing around, they're clicking around this shop or that shop. It's very easy to hop between shops. Other shops that do similar things as you are advertised at the bottom of your listings, which is not great because it sends people away. And sure, people can leave your site, but well, <laughs> they are free people, so. <laughs> but especially if you're sending someone to your shop, you don't want them getting lost and accidentally purchasing from another shop. That won't happen on, on your own platform, probably. <laughs> Next up, I feel like having my own web shop is cheaper, actually. There's difference in a way that it did cost me a lot of time to build. There's also some maintenance that needs to be done. Uh, also, the cost that I pay is upfront, so I have expenses for, and they're all yearly, by the way, but they're not very high. Uh, so there is expense for the domain name, the hosting, uh, the cost of the Elementor plugin, everything else, I think it's free. The payment solution that I use, so basically the plugin or the third party that handles all the credit cards, transactions, stuff, they take a small cut but compared to Etsy, it, it, it really is pretty small. And they have different plans depending on the volume of your sales. But I feel like every level is quite fair. Like I, I think it works pretty well right now. I think I go more in depth with that in the blog post. So you can read that if you want to know. Oh yeah, and another thing that actually I was surprised, I compared my first six months on Etsy to my first six months having my web shop open in terms of the sales that I made. And I expected that I probably made a lot more on Etsy in the beginning, but it turns out it's about the same. So if I'm going to put the same effort into something anyway, and by effort here, I mean driving traffic mostly, I'd rather it be pointing to my own place, my own web shop. So that's pretty nice. Another thing I like about having my own 
webshop is that I make the rules. I decide how long to take before I ship an order. I decide whether to track it or not, how to ship it. And the thing is, of course, you have to abide by legal rules. You can't just do whatever you want. You also have to think about if you are a customer, how would you want to be treated by the webshop you're shopping from. I'm not going to let someone wait for 10 days for me to pack their order. I usually do it within two, three days. But if I'm sick or something and if they have to wait four days, it's going to be fine. No one is going to punish me. Well, Etsy does let you decide that, but they're kind of nagging you if it's longer than two, three days, your processing time. And if you, for some reason, mark an order as shipped longer than your predicted time, again, they're not happy about it. And sometimes it's not even that you didn't do it. Sometimes you just forgot to mark it as shipped, but you cannot say, hey, I, I actually shipped it the correct date. I just forgot. Well, on your web shop, nobody cares. Okay, that was nice. But there are always cons. What are the cons of having your own web shop? Well, first of all, and it's a big one, all the traffic is up to you. What I mean by traffic is the people who visit your shop, the people who come through the door. On Etsy, even if you don't do anything, Etsy still sends you some traffic. I've noticed that the more active I am there, the more traffic I get. And now that I'm not very active there, I get less traffic, which I guess it's fair, but also meh. But when it comes to your own web shop, it's all up to you. If you have a good social media presence, you can just send your audience there. That's pretty neat. Uh, most of us don't have that. So yeah, we, we are working on it. If you're one for more passive solutions, you can try paying for ads, advertisement, paid advertisement. I haven't really done that. I kind of want to try it, but I also don't like spending money and I also hate ads on the principle. So yeah, but we'll see. And as far as I know, ads these days are not as easy as they used to be, like everything. Uh, you have to actually know what you're doing. You have to know how to target your audience and, and who they are and so on and so forth. It's not as easy as clicking a button, paying an amount and wait for the traffic to pour in. It does involve some knowledge, so it's not entirely a passive way. Other ways would be SEO, search engine optimization, which Again, how that works, no one really knows. It changes also all the time. It also takes a long time for this method to show any results. So yeah, driving traffic is hard. And you have some of that on Etsy as well. If you are driving traffic simultaneously with Etsy, you have better results, but it's definitely more work on your own platform. Next up, trust. As I mentioned earlier on Etsy, you get to borrow a lot of credibility from Etsy themselves. They are established, they are known, and people trust them and would trust them a lot easier than some random web shop on the net. I am trying to make my site as trustworthy as I can imagine it would be. I'm trying to answer all kinds of possible questions up front. I have a FAQ where I explain everything a customer might want to know about shipping, about returns, about all of that stuff. I have ways to contact me clearly visible on the site so that people know that they can reach me. And in fact, if they are to write me, they will probably get a lot more personal answer than on Etsy, but <laughs> still. I think actually this point about trust, it would be comparable to having a brand new Etsy shop that hasn't had any sales or reviews yet. Actually, yeah, reviews, very important for trust. Get as many as you can. Having other people vouch for your shop is very valuable. So whether on Etsy or on your own website, reviews is where it's at. Another con of having your own website and I think calling this one a con is not exactly fair, but it, it kind of is because it makes things a bit more uncomfortable and unpleasant. 
but it has to do with security and privacy issues. So when you're collecting people's information, this is very big responsibility about how you handle it, especially if you're based here in the EU or you have customers that are based in the EU. There are very strict regulations about privacy, cookies and all that stuff. So I recommend you get familiar with GDPR rules and get compliant with it. Ideally, you will have a lawyer to sort all that out. I haven't done that because I'm not rich, <laughs> but I have read about it and I'm doing the best I can to do things right. It's very important to make your website a safe place to be in, on. That means, for example, having a valid SSL certificate. Uh, that means that there is a little padlock icon in front of the URL. You also have to be very transparent about cookies and the information you collect, how you handle it, how you store it, how long you keep it. I try to keep it as uh, short a time as possible because I don't want to deal with it. But yeah, all of that stuff can be pretty stressful, but it's very important to know and to handle properly. So that's pretty much my thoughts on Etsy and my own webshop, generally speaking. I'm sure there might be more, but that's what I've thought of so far. And if I have to make a recommendation, I would say start with Etsy, see how it goes. If you like it, if it's something for you, if you want to grow, then after a year or so, start thinking about your own webshop. Also, I feel that with both, it's a good idea to continuously keep being informed, being on top of things, regulations, trends, how the internet is currently working and what is the competition doing. You can't always compete, especially with those big companies. So I don't even try, but it is a lot. It's a lot to keep in mind. It's a lot to work on and it's not easy, but we're doing our best, right? So for my blog post, I also answer a bunch of questions that I got from different people from Facebook and Instagram and so on. And I have no idea how long this video already is because it's been recorded in chunks. I had to change batteries and, and stuff like that. So it's hard for me to say if it's going to be too long to add this section, but I'm going to add it anyway, because I can always cut it later. So let's look at some questions, shall we? This first person asks how to open an Etsy shop. And well, it's easy. You go on Etsy, you sign up for a profile and they guide you through the process. They pretty much tell you what to do at every step. So it's quite easy, I would say. Personally, I watched a lot of videos and read a lot of stuff before I did that because I wanted to be prepared for all the things, but I'm sure you can manage even without that. Actually, I have now decided to start a second Etsy shop and this will and this one will be only for digital goods. They'll be a bit different from what I sell on my regular Etsy shop. Uh, it's going to be about patterns and clip art and stuff like that. So maybe I could make a video on how I start that. So then I can show you, I guess, how to do it. But we'll see. Should I do that? Let me know. And if you're just starting and you want to get 40 free listings, uh, hit me up. I have a referral link. I don't know if that counts as sponsorship. Like Etsy don't know that I'm saying that. So, and they're not paying me to say that. It's just whenever you have a web shop, you get this referral link that gives a person who is starting a new shop 40 free listings and also gives you 40 free listings. So everyone wins and it's great. So if you want one, let me know. I have them all. I have many. I'll put one in the description just in case. Next question. How do you market or advertise your shop? And that's a very good question. And I'm very bad at it. <laughs> so I'm um, not the best person to ask. I'm not a huge fan of marketing and advertising, uh, even though it's been a big part of my education. Uh, it wasn't the part I enjoyed. Um, <laughs> so I, I know a lot of things that I guess you could be doing. I just don't like them. Uh, but well, what is it that I do? I post on Instagram. 
I post here and there a little bit on YouTube. I sometimes post in Facebook groups that are related to what I'm selling and where I know there are people who might be interested in my products. I just share them every now and then, especially when I have something new. But yeah, I'm not particularly active with it. I mostly go for like the content strategy, but I'm very inconsistent with it. I just find it hard to stick with doing things or doing the same things consistently over long periods of time. So I do a burst here, a burst there, and whenever I make these bigger efforts, I notice that I get a spike in sales, but I just can't keep it up. It's, it's hard for me and it's a lot of work, especially for one person doing everything. So there's also paid ads. I haven't done that. Maybe you will want to try that. Next question. How much organic traffic do you get through Etsy? And right now the answer is most of it, which is not a lot, but it varies a little bit through from day to day. Sometimes I get like five visits a day. Sometimes I get 20, 30, but it's somewhere in that range. It's not a lot. Of course, it was more when I was sending people that way as well, but now it's divided between Etsy and my web shop. And I can tell that Etsy is not happy about it. I think the more you send yourself, the more they're also sending you. I don't know if that's like a official statement is just more of a feel so I don't know if it's true but in the past half a year or so all of my or most of my Etsy sales and traffic have come through Etsy itself and not from me because now I still send people to my shop. There is a question asking about my experience running a small business in Denmark and that's a very very large topic that I feel like could be video or blog posts or videos or blog posts in and of itself. And I'll probably do those at some point. Let me know if you would be interested in hearing about that. But in short, it's pretty hard. <laughs> and I, I think it's probably hard everywhere. I think it also depends a lot on the person and their situation. For me, as a foreigner with a very small network, it's hard to do anything, pretty much. So whether it's business, or being employed, I just have this thing that is a little bit against me. But it's my choice to be here, so I deal with it. I guess another issue someone might have in Denmark is the high taxes, but personally, I don't really mind that. I feel like I feel the benefits of paying high taxes. I think it's a good thing, so I'm, I'm cool with it. In fact, I hope I uh, make more money so that I can pay higher taxes. Taxes are great. Oh yeah, and another small point on uh, running a small business in Denmark. Well, I guess in this case that would be anywhere. I find that my personal views and values can be very conflicting with what is good to do in business, as I already mentioned, and I guess that's a me problem. There was also a lot of questions about taxes, which I'm not going to answer because I'm not an accountant, I don't work for SCAT, I don't know anything, and I don't feel it's my place to tell anyone how to do those things. Ask SCAT. <laughs> Someone asked about the cost difference between Etsy and your own shop and I would say the starting cost on Etsy is almost non-existent. It's a lot easier and cheaper to start on Etsy. Uh, with your own shop uh, you will have, even it, in the cheapest possible scenario, you would still have some costs and they will come upfront before you even know if you're gonna make any sales, so it's a bit more risky. I will say again, always start with Etsy and see how it goes from there. If you want to see more real numbers break down, so to say, you can check the blog post because I don't remember all the numbers right now. Someone asked if there is any service that is cheaper than PostNord and I think that could depend a lot on the volume that you sell and the type of products, how heavy they are. For me, I think right now PostNord is the best choice. I haven't done any research recently, so I don't know if there's been any changes to that, but I do use PostNord so far, haven't had any problems so far, but I think it's always good to be aware that sooner or later something will come up because it just does, it's, it's normal and you just have to be prepared for it. As for cheap, um, again, I think PostNord kind of does it for me for right now. I think other services that are very popular in Denmark are GLS and DAO. 
Uh, I think for me they were too expensive for what I'm shipping, which is small paper postcards, but it might be the right thing for your product. So this person asked, what should I think about when making the switch from Etsy? And I think uh, you should think about whether it's worth it for you. Do I want to do extra work? Do I want to take more responsibility? Do I see myself doing this long term? Do I want to grow? How much do I want to grow? So if you do want to do these things, then the switch is probably worth it for you. But if not, if you are more of a hobbyist, if you want to do less, then Etsy might be just enough. Is the work put into opening a web shop versus Etsy worth it? I think it's hard to say. I think so far for me, I feel like it's worth it. I'm happy that I did it. I'm very glad that I have my own web shop. I also thought the process of working on my web shop was a lot of fun. I learned a bunch of things and that feels satisfying to me. I had the time to do it, so that was fine. Um, but that's very personal. It might not be worth it for everyone. So I think, yeah, it's hard to say. I'm glad I did it. And will I think that in one year, two years, 10 years? I don't know, but I can only ask for this moment in time in which, yes, it is worth it. What is like driving traffic to Etsy versus your website? I would say it's mostly the same. So if you're gonna do it, do it to your own shop, I, I'd say. I don't think I'm doing things that much differently. Uh, it's just whenever I talk about my products, I just link to my website instead of Etsy. So generally speaking, the work is the same, but I feel like there's more payoff when I send people to my own website. So. <laughs> Do you think it makes a huge difference when someone goes to Etsy versus your web shop in the way they see your business as in more professional? Because that's one of my big concerns these days. I think that in general, um, especially for small private customers, I don't really think that it matters all that much. I think the average person doesn't really care how branded your shop is. I think if you're looking to expand into wholesale and partners, I think it might make difference there. I don't know for sure if it does, it's just my hypothesis that it probably does. But I really don't think it's that big of a deal, especially if you are selling directly to people. If they like what you sell, again, I don't think they will think less of you because they're buying it on Etsy. Can you sell well on Etsy if you don't have a community? And that's something I was wondering as well when I was starting. I think I also probably postponed starting my shop a lot because of this. I think at the time I had like six, 700 followers on Instagram and now I have a little over a thousand. So it's not really that big of a difference. Um, I would say if you do have a large community, there is no way that would hurt you. It would be great. I, I wish I had that because for sure it's going to give you a lot more sustainable sales. If you don't have that though, I don't think it's impossible to get sales. Again, I'm not big by any stretch. I'm super tiny drop in a huge ocean and I've been still able to make sales. Am I making enough sales to live just from my shop? Absolutely not. Uh, but that's why you need to do other things as well. But that's a whole other topic that I can touch on someday if anyone's interested. Would it be great if I can live just from the shop? Yes, but I don't really expect it anytime soon. So I would say it's good to have a lot of different things going on at the same time. So I, I think if you have a bigger community, you will be making more sales. But if you have a small one or none at all, it's still possible to make sales. Are people outside of Denmark turned off by the postage costs? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think they probably aren't because they still buy from me. I think what at least turns me off from buying outside of Denmark, particularly outside of the EU, is the customs expenses. But I think 
when it comes to shipping, you always have shipping. It's it's just normal. I think people just expect it at this point. It's not. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that's true. It's my belief that maybe people in the US kind of expect free shipping. I feel like that's more of a standard over there. You can tell me if you are from there, if that's true. I think it's less expected in Europe and definitely not in Denmark. So I don't think they're particularly turned off. And if they are, they haven't bought, so I don't know. But yeah, paying for shipping is annoying. No one likes it, but it is what it is. Do you mainly sell to Danes? I would say that the bigger chunk of my sales are within Denmark. I think most of those people are not Danes because I think by the nature of my product, my main audience is foreigners who live in Denmark or who have lived in Denmark. I would say another big group is Danes who live abroad and there's also the Danes themselves. But I think that is different depending on your product because I think it might look completely different if my product was something that had nothing to do with Denmark at all. Does Etsy take a percentage of your sales? Yes, they do. Of course they do. And I think that's fair. They have also recently increased their cost, which is not great, but there's nothing I can do about it. I've put more numbers in the blog post if you want to look into that, because I don't really remember it at all. I definitely get less charges through my website, which is to be expected, but it's, I don't think it's that bad. It's not the end of the world. I think if you price your products correctly, it shouldn't affect you that much. And I guess pricing is another big topic that maybe it's worth talking about if anyone's interested. Make sure to account for charges in your prices. Don't try to be the cheapest out there because you will be hurting yourself. The people who offer very cheap products, a lot of them, they're most likely exploiting the people who make the products. Don't exploit yourself or other people. What are the most important, not to miss steps, things when starting Etsy. I think uh, what is important is to be prepared with all the things that will come up, like know what the shipping costs will be for your product, uh, have prepared packaging. I bought mine in bulk before I opened the shop because it's cheaper that way. Know how you will package and ship your products. As for the shop itself, have very clear descriptions, set very clear expectations of what the customer will get or won't get. Like, for example, if you have a picture of a poster with a frame, you can say that the frame is not included or is, if it is. Set proper expectations on waiting times. Make sure to mention that people who are buying from outside the EU might get additional customs charges. This is not up to you. This is nothing you can do about it. It's just how international business works. But many people don't know that, so it's good to let them know. Because sometimes if they don't, they might blame you and it won't be fun. <laughs> Have very good photos, very clear photography of uh, what it is that you sell. The pictures are very, very important because biggest chunk of the buying decision will be based on them, according to research science says. So have your product photographed in a very clear way that shows it very well. If scale is something that's important, maybe show it in relation to something else so people can picture how big it is. There is a ton of advice also out there on pictures because it's a very big topic. Make sure to tag your products correctly. You have 13 tags. It's very important. This is how you get found in search. So use those well. Have very clear titles and descriptions. Don't be poetic or original in those. <laughs> explain your products the way you would explain them to a five-year-old. Very clear so that there is no confusion and think about if I'm looking for this product, what description will help me find it and do that. <laughs> and yeah, make a ton of research. There's so much information out there. It's overwhelming. Don't read all of it, but do read some of it. And yeah, I think I need a drink now because my mouth is super dry. And I think I'm going to end this here. I hope it's under an hour because yeah, I just hope that. <laughs> 
Anyway, let me know if this was helpful, if you managed to watch till the end. Anyway, let me know if there is more you want to know about selling on Etsy or selling on your own website or being a small business, particularly in Denmark, particularly in the creative art space. It's the first time in a long time that I make this information heavy video, so I'm not sure if I've done a good job. I hope so, but I'm new to this, so be nice to me and yeah let me know if there's more you want to know if there's questions you have if you want to hear me talk about something just write all of that down in the comments give me a like if this was useful yeah and i'll see you next time